I think it should be plenty clear to see why I'm not finishing the barrel before I put the trunnion mount holes in. It's just a lot easier to do this particular operation when you have parallel sides front and back. And the back side, this side here, or the, I guess the breech side, if there was a breech on these, is going to have that ball configuration and will be a little bit tougher to hold. Now when you sweep a part like this in with an indicator, you need to get the vertical high spot as well as the radial high spot. And since this is a tapered surface, it really doesn't matter finding the center of a tapered surface so long as you don't move the indicator when you go for the other side because the high spot is going to be exactly the same. All right, let's bring the indicator down and in and look for the vertical high spot on this. You'll see it show up. Oop, there you go. Try not to smash your indicator while you're doing it. All right, go down and up. Look for the needle to peek out and come back. Right now we're sitting at about two and a half. I'm going to lock it in right there. I'll spin the spindle by hand and watch what happens. Okay, it drops down to about minus a half both ways. So right there where the needle doesn't move, that should be your zero, which it is. If you have a digital readout, zero it right now provided it's turned on. This one's going to be kind of blind. I'll turn the camera around so you can see it. Without moving the indicator, come around the other side of it, do the exact same thing. Let's reposition this so you can see what's going on. Trust me. I'm going to look for the vertical high spot first so I know I'm on center of the barrel. I'm moving the x-axis into the indicator to drive the needle forward. There's my high spot right there. I'm going to spin it now. Watch for the bounce point. I'm going to move it back to about a half before where it was on the other side. And remember like I told you guys about Watch the face of your indicator. This is a brown and sharp brand. I am a half thou on the brown side. So right now my dial, my digital is reading 234. I'm going to hit the center line button. Select the x-axis. And when I move back to 117, or into 117, digital readout reads zero. I am now on the center of that part. All right, I'm going to go through there with a four flute, three eighths inch carbide end mill. I shifted 125 thou off center, one eighth of an inch. And cosmetically, I'm between the second and third support ring on the barrel. And once we hollow this barrel out, the majority of the weight's going to be on this end, so it's going to have a bias to the rear, which is good, which is what I want. Let's creep the table up and uh, put a nice clean hole through that. Now brass is a real grabby material with drills and anything else, so to keep this hole nice and clean, additionally since I'm going in on a radial surface, I am going to lock the spindle in place, lock the quill, column, whatever you're going to call it where you're at, and I'm going to come up with the part. Okay, so the cutting you see is the table moving up.
I can feel the pressure increasing and that little remnant right there in the end mill would be why. We have a clogged flute. That is something you definitely need to be aware of. There you go. Let's continue. I do have a stop set on my quill. I am feeding the column or I'm feeding the, the quill down to the stop, backing out, coming up with the table, feeding back down to the stop. So there won't be any grabbing going on. That's not under control.